Hi everyone, it's Niall from windowsnoob.com and today we're going to take a look at something that I tweeted a little while ago. And that is the ability to migrate lots of on-premises computers which are domain joined and config manager managed. And we're going to migrate them to the cloud, so cloud management. So those devices will move from the on-premises domain to Azure AD and the management will go from config manager to intune only so if you're interested in that keep watching because that's what we're going to have a look at right now okay i will log into my domain joined device And as we can see, there's some files on the desktop. I've stuck a, a text file here and it's synced into OneDrive. And uh, this is what our start menu looks like currently. <clears throat> we have Office installed. That's about it really. Uh, and it's, remember, domain joined and config manager managed. Okay, so let's um, launch Software Center and I've just updated the content of this app, so hopefully it's okay. And get rid of that. And go to applications. And here's the app. Migrate to the cloud. Let's give it a go. <clears throat> All right, so now it's downloading. Uh, I've made this available on the local DP as well as the CMG. So it's available to run from anywhere. Now, um, Let's have a little look at what it looks like. So the app itself, as you can see, uh, it's called Migrate to the Cloud, and it has two options. Basically, the user has to confirm that their files are backed up in OneDrive and that they want to migrate this PC to the cloud. So let's click both. And as you can see, the OK button is now highlighted, or clickable, I should say. Next, they get a uh, message which explains what's about to happen, how long it's going to take, how long it'll take after that for policy to uh, sync. They probably won't read it anyway, but we're going to write it. And when prompted to log in, please use the following username and the UPN of that user is listed. They can click OK to continue or cancel to exit out of this process. But of course, we want them to continue. So let's click OK. Now, this is the first part of three and basically what you can see here is a status screen with uh, the current step flashing through uh, black white gray uh, and when it completes you get a green tick the step that takes the longest in all of the three parts pretty much is the uh, config manager client agent removal which is the step we're on now You'll see also that there is an abort button down here to the bottom right corner. That isn't for the end user to abort out of the process. It is just for you, the developer, uh, when you're trying to integrate this into your own environment. It allows you to close this status screen so you can review the logs real time, but also do some troubleshooting. So uh, there is a uh, variable in the scripts. I think it's dev mode. And currently it's set to true, which shows you the abort button. When you set it to false, it will hide that abort button so that there's no way out of this once the user launches it. Um, okay, so as I said, the removal of the SCCM client agent takes the longest. It's nearly done. But once it's done, it will um, prepare the Windows shell for part two before dropping out of the domain and then restarting the computer. <clears throat> now, I did have some issues with OneDrive earlier this morning, so hopefully I won't have them in this, this uh, video, but let's see. All right, and it is now launching into part two, just like that. As you can see, it automatically logged in to the migration account called MP Sweepback, and that account is only used during part two uh, to do the things that you're seeing right now. Uh, there is a, 
proxy settings function, which you can skip, uh, but it's needed in proxy environments. <clears throat> and now we're going to launch the Azure AD join wizard. To do that, we have to start Explorer, even though we're in a shell, uh, and then we kill Explorer again. This is needed, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so off we go. And now I should be prompted for MFA, and I am on my phone. I'll just approve that. And we should get a pop-up screen here. Make sure this is your organization, windowsnoob.com. That's the one, that's me. User type, don't worry about that. We'll be changing to standard user later on. So we're gonna click on join. <coughs> Now, it would be great if Microsoft would provide PowerShell commandlets to make this uh, automatable in its entirety, but right now there aren't any. So um, we had to do some, tr some tricks here to get that to launch. Okay, now it's removing the auto login of the AP, AP Sweepback user and modifying scheduled tasks for uh, the next part. Oh, this step, converting to Windows Autopilot. So what happens here is it takes um, the device ID and, uh, and adds this device to an Azure AD group, which is this one uh, in Intune. And basically it does that using a HTTP trigger in Azure, a HTTP trigger running as a function in Azure. And it will just keep on polling that every 15 seconds until it has confirmed that the device is added to that Azure AD group. Now, why is that important? And why does it say converting to Windows Autopilot? Well, the reason is that we have deployed a custom uh, Windows Autopilot deployment profile to that Azure AD group. And that converts any devices present in that Azure AD group to Windows Autopilot any Windows devices, of course. So let's go back to our group and it should be there. And there it is. And that device will end up here. It's not there currently, but that's where it will end up. So if we go back, we are now at the login screen again. So let's log in. And this time we have to log in using our UPN. If you want to get creative, you can modify the lock screen background here to make it clear to, to your end users that they need to log in with their UPN. <clears throat> and off we go. So I think there's two remaining little bugs uh, or things that I have to resolve with this. One of which is a oddity that I'm seeing with Windows Hello for Business, uh, which will occur soon, uh, in that uh, when we um, enter the PIN the first time, we get an error, which is not documented. Uh, but if we enter the PIN again, uh, it works just fine. So if anyone knows the answer to that problem, which is coming up soon, please let me know. I have contacted Microsoft and they haven't given me an answer yet. Anyway, um, the other issue, which is rather annoying, is getting uh, OneDrive to automatically sign on without a fuss. I've tried the Intune policies, I've tried registry keys, and you know, to be honest, OneDrive seems to have a mind of its own. Sometimes it, it auto launches and sometimes it does not. <clears throat> so it could be a timing thing, let's see. Anyway, uh, this looks, very familiar to most of you that are familiar with Windows Autopilot, it's the enrollment status page, which isn't part of Windows Autopilot, but is commonly seen during Windows Autopilot enrollments. So what we have here, it's um, gonna spend a couple of minutes on that. And in fact, it's now done and it should launch the Windows Hello for Business setup. Now, if this was real hardware, it would give me the opportunity to use uh, biometrics, for example, you, uh, scan your face or uh, fingerprint. But because this is a virtual machine, 
with a TPM or a virtual TPM, uh, we're just going to enter a pin. So here we go. And here is the pin entry. Remember, I said the first time I do this, I'll see an error. And the error, funnily enough, is not documented at all here in pin errors. So here's the error, 801C0026. If you know the solution to this, let me know. So I click try again, and off we go. <clears throat> and this time it accepts it. Right, so here we are. It says your device is ready, but also we've got the status for part three showing up. Uh, and as you can see, it's doing a bunch of things, including installing company portal. And um, undoing migration changes and also completing the migration. Now, the completing migration step is an interesting one. And what that does is it uses a function which we used in part two to add the device dynamically to an Azure AD group. But in this case, the completing migration step is going to add it to a different group, and that group is called AP Suite Back Completed. And the reason for that is you want to know when your uh, devices have completed their cloud migration, and you want to be able to report on that. So they're going to appear here. Nothing's you're not going to see uh, the success of this in Config Manager because there is no Config Manager client agent to report back any status. So basically what we do is, uh, as part of the completing migration, we dynamically add the device to that Azure AD group, and you can use that for reporting, or you can use it for deploying fixes or registry changes or Intune policy changes to those migrated devices. Because remember, these devices came from an on-premises domain uh, with Config Manager. So they may have domain-based policy registry settings still in place that you need to fix or adjust uh, after the migration. So as you can see, it's on that step. It's pulsing away and it checks every 15 seconds to see is the device in the Azure AD group or not. And it won't continue until the device is in the Azure AD group, which is fantastic. And hopefully it's going to get on with it. Normally this is relatively quick, but of course I'm videoing it, so It's taking longer than normal. Ah, there we go. So let's just check that Azure AD group and we'll refresh and there's our device, perfect. So if we go back to our uh, migrated device, it basically has done the migration and it's popping up this message to the end user to say, congratulations, you have migrated your PC to the cloud. Please note, that over the next hour, your computer will continue installing policy and apps. Your data is available via OneDrive. I might add a little question. I might add a little statement there, like you might have to log in to OneDrive manually. Please click OK to log off. Let's do that. So, when we log off, um, we're doing that so that we present the end user with their Windows Hello for Business UPN credentials. So now, as you can see, it's got my name and it's prompting for my Windows Hello for Business login. And now that we've logged in, uh, what we should see happening is that Intune device and user base policy starts flowing down. And indeed it has, uh, this is, uh, an app that I've deployed to my devices. So what we're going to see, in fact, is over the next, I don't know, several minutes, is that um, um, the start menu should change once it gets the policy from Intune. Now you can see in the left, there is the company portal. So no more config manager on this device. It is 
it is cloud managed and there's another app that I have pushed out, which is a app that I use for forcing uh, Windows Autopilot's enrollments to fail. So don't be worried about that. Um, but it just shows you that this device is indeed cloud managed. Now the, the missing piece in the puzzle here, ah, and there the start menu has just changed. So it has now got the start menu policy. And if we wait long enough, hopefully it will also flip over and um, OneDrive will automatically start. However, I have mixed uh, results with getting OneDrive to do that. So let's see what happens. So we can see OneDrive is there, not signed in. And of course, OneDrive is there. It is installed. I've applied the registry keys. Let's give it another minute or two to see will it uh, sign in itself. And if it doesn't, we'll click it. Okay, I clicked it. Um, got tired of waiting. Uh, like I said, uh, half of the time, oh uh, yeah, we've got two of them. Half of the time, um, OneDrive for Business will automatically sign in like it just did there. Maybe I should have just waited. Uh, but some of the time, it will not start at all. So that is one I hope to fix very shortly. Anyway. Uh, before I blog it, of course. So let's take a look in here. And there's our text file, which we created just at the start of the video. So basically, the job is done. It's complete. We have migrated this device off of our on-premises domain uh, infrastructure. We've removed SCCM and MBAM client agents from it and instead replace them with Intune. This device is now Intune managed. And if we go back to Intune itself um, here, we should actually, this was before we added the device and we should see it show up now. And there it is. It's not compliant yet, but it will be very shortly. And if we look in Windows Autopilot devices, let's see, does it show up? I'll do a sync. I know it will show up. Um, because basically it has been added to the convert uh, devices to Windows Autopilot. And let's just check in Azure. And as you can see, it's got the Autopilot symbol. So that is an Autopilot device in Azure and it's Intune managed, as you can see there. So we've basically succeeded in migrating our device from the on-premise infrastructure to uh, cloud management. What do you think about this? What are your thoughts? Would you like to try it out? Keep watching and follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'll show you my handle again. It's NC Brady. Follow me on Twitter because I'll be blogging this hopefully within a week or so uh, once I iron out some of the final bugs. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.